Hey, what's up? I'm Justin. Welcome to 65 Drums. If you want to keep on top of all things Edrum related, hit that subscribe and bell icon so you don't miss any of the new videos. Today is another viewer spotlight kit breakdown. So this is where we take kits of people that actually watch 65 Drums. We break them down, take a look at all the different individual components, how much everything costs. So hopefully this gives you some inspiration on future upgrades for your kit. And, and a first for this series, we're gonna have playing footage near the end. And also this is the first drum set that's mostly acoustic with electronic add-ons. Now there's a big spectrum of electronic drums out there. You have the pure electronic drums, like a TD6, like a Crimson II, where it's just electronic drum pads connected to a module. And then you have drum sets like my kit behind me right there, where it is still 100% electronic, but it's using acoustic shells. And then you have kits like Mike's drum set right here, where it's mostly acoustic drums with acoustic cymbals, no drum triggers, but with a few extra pads, a multi-pad, an extra kick drum, stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So that's what he's doing right here. And it's gonna be really fun to talk about. Let's jump in and take a look at what kind of drum shells he's using first. So as far as his actual, you know, acoustic kick drum and toms, he's gone with Sonar Force 2007s. Now he's actually got a price breakdown, which was really helpful for me. $1,800 if you buy this brand new, or $900 if you buy those toms and the kick drum separately used on eBay. Now I have a special place in my heart for Sonar drums because the drum set behind me is a Sonar Force 2001. Now the 2001 series is definitely not as nice as the 2007 series. The 2001 series is more like a beginner option, but I've turned it into an electronic drum set so it doesn't really matter. I'm not actually using the acoustic sound at all. However, he is. For his snare, he's actually gone for a different brand altogether. This brand is Mapex, it's a Black Panther Fat Bob. Those are going for $490 if you buy them brand new right now, or $300 used. Let's take a look at the symbols. For his hi-hats, he's gone with a set of 13-inch Peisty Dark Crisp hats. Those are 480 bucks brand new and 250 bucks used. That's the sucky thing about hi-hats because it's really two symbols sandwiched together. So they're always more expensive than just a regular crash symbol or something like that. He's got a A Custom 8-inch Splash, which is $110 brand new. Zildjian Z Custom 18-inch crash cymbal, that's his heavy crash, 200 bucks brand new, 110 used. I really like heavy crashes. Now it depends on the different make and model. I, I am a pretty big fan of the Z uh, Custom series. So yeah, I'm sure it sounds really nice. And you're gonna hear it later on in the video as we do playing examples. For his medium crash, he's got a Sabian AAX Ozone 16-inch, which is 225 bucks brand new and $169 used. Now I also have a special place in my heart for Sabian cymbals because I grew up playing Sabian B8s. And of course I love the HHX series, the AAX series, I love those. And I remember when the cymbals with the giant holes, you know, punch into them, the Ozone series, I remember when those were more of a newer thing. And it seems kind of like a gimmick, but they sound so nice when you play them. I'm sure a bunch of you have already played these. The attack is like instant, it sounds great. It wouldn't be a crash that it hit every single time but it's nice to have that as an option on this set. Now for his thin crash, he's got a Sabian AAX 15 inch. That's going for 195 brand new, $90 used. For his China, he's got an absolute epically massive China symbol. This is a Sabian HHX 22 inches across, 380 bucks if you buy this brand new, 170 if you buy it used on eBay. Now for his ride symbol, he's got a 21 inch HHX raw bell and that's going for $399 brand new or $200 used. Man, the nice ride cymbals are always incredibly expensive, but if you take a look at an equivalent ride cymbal for electronic drums, unfortunately, it's like the same price because take a look at those new ATV cymbals out there that they just released. They just released a 17 inch China cymbal and they just released a, of course, they've always had their, their 18 inch ride cymbal and those are huge. And unfortunately, they're incredibly expensive as well. For his pedal, he has a Sonar bass drum pedal, which is 59 bucks new, 40 bucks used. He's actually using that Sonar pedal on a kick drum pad we're gonna talk about. For his hi-hat stand, it's Tama, 90 bucks brand new, 50 bucks used. For his main kick drum pedal, he's gone with a set of Iron Cobra Power Glide double kick pedals. That's 400 bucks brand new, $200 used. And then for his uh, drum rack, he's gone with something that's rock solid, a Gibraltar curved drum rack. So that's the acoustic half of this drum setup. And let me tell you, it looks amazing, it sounds great, and it's something I would personally buy. Now, I'm a guy where I only use one high tom and two 
uh, floor toms. So a little bit of my setup would change, but this is literally one of my dream setups, something that I would like to have eventually. And he spent a whole lot of money on this overall setup as we're gonna get to at the end of the video. Now let's take a look at some of the electronic stuff that he's gone with to add on to this setup. Now for those two pads that you're seeing right there, those are actually Yamaha pads. They're eight inches across and it's the TP65 series. He's got two of them, so that would be $60 brand new or $30 used if you bought both of them on eBay. That kick pad that you'll see to the left of his hi-hat stand, that is also a Yamaha. It's a Yamaha KP65. That's 70 bucks brand new, $50 used on eBay. Now, the, the interesting thing about this whole pad setup is that all this is plugging into a multi-pad, which we're gonna talk about. But uh, he's actually got that one left pad running straight into the kick drum because that kick drum from Yamaha is great because you've got a dual zone setup. You got a dual zone input on it. They thought to themselves, well, why don't we just use one zone for the kick pad and then have the other zone? Let's just have an extra input on the kick pad itself, let you plug in a single zone pad, and that way you're only running one cable over to the drum module or the multi-pad, and uh, just gives you more flexibility like that. So that's pretty darn cool. Now, I really like the idea of having an extra kick drum pad. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to have, you know, some sort of EDM kick drum sound, something just like cuts through the mix, sounds really powerful, and will complement my drum set just for a little bit, maybe not even the entire song, but I don't want to change kits to make that happen. Now, I could put an extra kick drum pad, like the pad for my TD30K, which is the KD120. The problem is that thing takes up a lot of space. It's an absolute beast. It feels nice to play on, but it's just too big. I can't hide it underneath my floor tom or next to my kick drum or next to my hi-hat. I just don't have room down here. But this is actually a cool idea because it's small, doesn't take up much space, and it has an extra input on the back of it so you can plug in an extra pad only using one cord. So I think that's really, really cool and I like this whole setup right here. Now he's mounted that uh, extra pad to the drum rack itself. So all these pads, even the multi-pad, they're all mounted to the Gibraltar drum rack. Now if you look to the floor, you'll see that he's using a Yamaha hi-hat controller pedal. This is the HH65. This is going for 90 bucks brand new, 60 bucks used on eBay right now. Now the thing that really confused me about this whole setup as I was doing the research getting ready to make this video, I was thinking to myself, I know he's using a Roland SPD SX pad, okay? But it doesn't have a hi-hat controller input. What the heck is he connecting this hi-hat controller to? So I messaged him about it and he said that he's actually plugging this uh, Yamaha hi-hat controller pedal into the foot switch input on the Roland SPD SX. Now this lets him switch kits. So whenever he wants to go from kit one to kit two to kit three, he just presses his hi-hat controller pedal and that functions as a foot switch. I didn't know you could do that. Usually you use something like this. I've used one of these in the past. This is the guitar foot pedal switch. And you can use one of these, you can use one of the boss foot switches, but instead he's using a uh, hi-hat controller pedal. I didn't know that was possible, so that's some good info for me to know. And then of course we have to talk about the one thing that makes all this stuff work together, and it's the Roland SPD SX pad. Now, every time I mention this thing, someone always mentions the Yamaha Multipad 12. And yeah, that's a cool pad. And I actually found a really, really, really rock solid video explaining all the differences between the Yamaha Multipad and the Roland SPD SX pad, going through all the nooks and crannies of all the different features between the two. It's like 20 minutes long. I'll link that great video in the description below if you want to learn more. But the Roland SPD SX pad is just more popular with famous musicians. Uh, you see this thing on countless stages. Just off the top of my head, I can think of 21 Pilots. He actually uses this thing because it's really good for importing samples onto it. And he's using this to also control all those pads that you see there in these photos. Now, if you're wondering about the differences between the Roland SPD SX pad and the Roland SPD SX pad special edition, I've looked into it and really the biggest difference is that the new version has 16 gigabytes of internal memory. And then the older version, the one he has, gives you two gigabytes. Is it worth that extra hundred dollars? It really depends on who you are and what you need. But uh, I mean, the two gigabytes is enough, but it really should be more. So the 16 gigabytes will be more helpful. But I feel like that red look, it stands out a little bit too much in my eyes. So I'm waiting for the next version of the SPD XX pad. And of course, I forgot to mention he's got mics on all these drums. He didn't tell me exactly what the mic models were. I'll put them on the screen if I learn the actual models. But he's had to work on wire management here because he's got all these drum pads and he's got all these drum mics and of course this is going to be a mess. So what he's doing is he's got Velcro straps and he's running the cables along that drum rack. It's really hard to get ultra clean 100% cable management. The only time I've ever seen it done to perfection 
was a V-Drum Tips video where he actually cut all the different cable lengths to size and then soldered them all up. So he basically made custom cables the exact length between the drum module and each of the cymbals. That's the best cable management I've ever seen in my life. And until the dawn of wireless drum pads, uh, we're going to be messing around with cables. Now, as a quick sidetrack, a couple of wireless things have happened over the years. We've seen Versus Trigger come out with wireless drum triggers. I did a review of the original version. I don't know how their newer version is, but we saw DB Drums, I believe that's the company name, where they came out with a wireless drum module over at NAMM. I've been talking to the guy that owns that company and he's working on that, so that's interesting. But the dawn of truly wireless drums isn't here yet. I'm really excited that it will be here eventually, but we're not quite there yet. So until that happens, we're gonna have to deal with cable messes. Okay, so let's watch a video clip of him playing the drum set. Now I know you're probably interested to see how much this drum set cost. And let me tell you, a lot of real money was laid out to make this kit happen. So brand new, all these components cost you $6,322. And if you bought all this stuff used on eBay separately, you could get it down to about $3,669. That's the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got a lot of exciting new drum sets planned for the series. I'm not gonna do them like every single day, I'm gonna space them out, but they're coming. So keep subscribed and keep watching for those new videos. Hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you in a few. This thing is rock solid, it's got a great user interface. And if you're wondering about the... Hello? Oh, my name's Justin. That's right, bye. No, I'm not at the hospital.